Marisha Ray is not only an incredibly adept voice actor, but she is also one of the most famous D&D players in the world. So I talked to her about creating great characters, bringing them to life, and having a great D&D game. It's a make-believe world. Big risks come with big rewards when they're successful. And take the risks that you can't take in this real world, because that's what D&D &D is there for. So go big, go bold, and I think you'll, you'll really get the most out of D&D &D that way. It, it definitely, the responsibility is, is real, and we try to, we, we desperately want people to know that just because of the way we play our game doesn't mean that that's how you have to play your game. And the last thing that we want is for us to is for people to look at our group and get intimidated because that's probably one of the things that we get the most is well you guys are just such good role players and I could never do that and we're like no 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 don't you can't even put that in your head because you can and what people need to remember is we've been these characters now for five years so it's super easy to drop into them our first game was just as rocky and just as much as a clusterfuck as everyone else's first game. Um, and, and, you know, I think that's important to keep that in mind, that the important thing is to have fun and to do that your way. And it's, it's not an intimidating thing. D&D comes with a learning curve, but it has such a supportive community and fan base that people, if you find a good group, they'll help you along. You know, they'll, they'll help you out. And I think, yeah, keep that in mind. Don't get intimidated. You know, I think I was more confident as a kid. I think uh, I, I went through what everybody does when the world, and I think it's really unfortunate where I feel like society one day tells you that you have to grow up and be mature and act like adults and stop pretending, stop this make-believe shit. And like, why? Why do, we, why do we do that to people? It's so sad. And so I, I think I went through that like everybody did in their um, kind of early adult years. And then in finding D&D, because I didn't find D&D until um, I moved to Los Angeles, because I'm from, uh, I'm from Kentucky, kind of that mid Midwest Bible, Bible Belt area. So it just wasn't really available to me then. So finding D&D &D later in life kind of reminded me, oh, adults can play pretend too, and that's awesome. And I love the resurgence of D&D &D because of that fact, almost, like almost solely. Like if we can all learn one thing, take away one thing from D&D, &D, it's that if we can get more adults to play make-believe, I genuinely think the world will be a way more understanding and compassionate place. I play Keyleth, who is the slightly socially awkward half-elf druid. Um, I originally picked a druid because in Pathfinder I had tried out, or sorry, not in Pathfinder, we started in Pathfinder. In fourth edition I tried out a druid in a one-shot, and it just, I hated it. Hated the class, felt like a jack of all trades, but master of none, and like just doing mediocre damage, mediocre spells, and I was like, this is, ah. So then when we, when we went to the Pathfinder campaign, I really liked some of the adjustments that were made with like 3.5, and uh, ended up deciding to give the class another chance, and loved it, and the, the kind of, character, the, the social awkwardness of Keyleth kind of was spawned from being a part of a new group with like Laura Bailey and Travis Willingham and Liam O'Brien and all of these amazing voice actors who I didn't really know at the time and I was just getting started in my voice acting career. So I was like, okay, well if I play someone with super low charisma who's just like kind of nervous and scared to talk to people, maybe it'll just look like that's my character and I won't look nervous or scared to talk to these people at all. And of course in those first games, you're always like, uh, she's uh, from a tribe and set off to try and impress her people and become chief. 
you know, it's always something super kind of arbitrary for those first games. And our first game was supposed to be a, a one shot. It wasn't necessarily supposed to keep going for five years now. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll try something, something a little different because I normally kind of stick to rogues and badasses. And so I thought I'd mix it up. And lo and behold, she is now my longest running character to date. <laughs> As we started realizing that the game wasn't just going to be a one shot and that we were pretty committed into this and that this was, we were all pretty hooked at that point after, you know, a few months of playing. Then, you know, I mean, I, I believe that characters are just like, they're just like kids, you know, when they're first getting started. And those level one, level two characters, I think the world and the environment around them affects them a lot. And I think that's important for people to understand with role playing is just like a person in real life, you're gonna change as the world around you affects you and does probably some pretty terrible things to you. So I, I kind of found the story with Keyleth as our game went on and really wanted to tell a kind of coming of age story of someone who's destined and meant to be a leader and trying to find that line between destiny and making your own choices and decisions and what that means. And she was someone who's not really necessarily a good talker trying to become a leader. So taking someone's worst skill and working over time to try and make it something that they're okay at, at least okay at. Um, and it's, it's been quite the journey. She's had quite the arc, Keyleth. <laughs> voice acting, I think what I love most about voice acting is that you are not limited by your looks and your body type to play pretty much any character. So I've played a range from everything from badass assassin chicks to soldiers to little boys and little kids to old women. And I can get to stretch my legs and do those types of roles that I wouldn't have gotten cast in if it was just on camera work because, you know, this is hard to pass as a 12 year old boy. You know, maybe on my off days. Yeah. You can just, yeah. Yeah. Part of the reason I became an actor is because I couldn't really decide on what career I wanted to do. And I was like, if I'm an actor, I can kind of pretend to do all of them. So I love doing everything from soldiers to the creepy witches in, in RPGs. Um, villains are always amazing. Um, yeah, and it's heroes and comic book characters. I'm still, one of my dream roles is Poison Ivy. One of these days, maybe I'll do Poison Ivy. Uh, fingers crossed. But yeah, I think, you know, I, I, yeah, acting is acting. So if it's on camera, if it's voiceover, if it's in an RPG on the stage, uh, I'm down for it all. I love it all. That's why I got into this, man. <laughs>